Hello. Today we're going to briefly talk about UML diagrams. When you think about software engineering, what do you think about? Do you know that software is used every day in almost everything you could think of? It might, might seem complicated as to exactly how these software systems work. However, it's really not that uh, difficult. Chances are you've programmed something before in a, a computer language. And if you've done that before, then you basically already know how to make software. Of course, it is still difficult. The trick is organizing your development process to manage the software when it gets larger. And there are a number of proven ways to do this that, that professionals have been using. You would think Now, you might think, why bother take the time and trouble to organize yourself? Why not just make the software? If you're ambitious, you could probably make software perfectly fine, but it might not be uh, easy, easy to read or easy for someone else to fix. Small pro programs can be very simple to write, but the larger software projects uh, take longer periods of time. You might get lose track to, of where you are. Having some sort of blueprint makes it much easier to understand uh, where you are and where you're going. And so, that's what UML diagrams are for. They essentially make a, for us a blueprint that uh, developers can follow throughout the design process. UML defines, uh, stands for Unified Modeling Language. It's like a language that we use to model things. It should be made and uh, these diagrams should be made and understood before the actual implementation is made. Therefore, you might be able to find any uh, errors or corrections that need to be made before actually making the code. They are not required for m making software, but it's highly recommended. Also, it's not required that you make UML di diagrams a certain way, although it is high highly recommended that you do make them a certain way, as defined by a standard that has been specified. That way, most people can understand it better. There are a wide variety of different diagrams that UML can define. They each rep represent different things for uh, projects. Right now we're going to focus on class diagrams for this video. We don't really have enough time to focus on the others. But also, if you have some time, please look up activity diagrams, use case diagrams, sequence diagrams, and state diagrams. Here I quickly have a UML diagram as an example. Suppose this was a system of some kind that kept track of a school's classes, students, and teachers. You can tell from the diagram I have four boxes here, each defining different things. A school system, a classroom, a student, and a professor. I'll explain these a little bit better. Classes and objects in your code, especially for object-oriented programming, if you understand that you might understand this, uh, classes and objects are listed with a box that represents it. Major variables and methods are also listed within each box uh, so that we can understand uh, what each uh, class is doing. You might notice those uh, arrows that are connecting some of these objects. The arrows indicate uh, relations between each of the objects. And the numbers that you, the small numbers you see on the arrows also describe how these relations are formed. The arrows are slightly different and they also define different relations. I will talk about them a bit here. There are different re relation types that objects could have with each other. If you don't want to get too complicated you could just define everything as association where a simple relation is made between one class and another. But if you want to get more detailed, you can also use aggregation, saying that one object is a complete subset or part of another object. Or composition, which is a stronger form of aggregation, where if you had uh, just the, the subset, it wouldn't be meaningful without the whole, and vice versa. If we look at a close-up here, we can see the school system and the classroom I defined as a composition relation. The school system is the sole owner of this classroom, and the school system can have one or more classrooms. The classroom can only belong to one school system. A student 
will launch the classroom through aggregation. Classrooms can uh, contain a collection of students. Every student has one or more classrooms. Every classroom has zero or more registered students. Association is where each classroom has a professor asso associated with, with, with it. Every professor teaches at least one or more classes in order to be hired as a teacher. Every classroom must have one professor. Note that the way I made this diagram may be different from how you may, might write it. The point is that you understood what I was trying to say. Now certainly there's a lot more to UML diagrams than this. Uh, the important thing is that whatever you're working uh, with, the people that you're working with can understand your diagram. And therefore they can un understand what you're trying to do for the project. However, try to follow methods that make the most sense to standard UML, which can, you can find defined online. As most people uh, probably learn and understand th those standards. Study the other types of UML diagrams I've talked about and what they represent. Ask, your, ask yourself, why do we use these diagram types? Do they do something well or not so well? Ask yourself which diagrams are important for your software project. Thank you for watching.